Change my mind. In fact, honey, I've already packed all my stuff. We're no longer kids. Let's move on. And you are not my kid, so I'm done. Please don't make me pull my gun. Sorry, boy, I can't be the one. You know it. Yeah, nothing lasts forever. You know that a change will make it better. You know that nothing lasts forever. You know that yeah, a change will make it better. There's no one to blame, you see. Maybe we're not meant to be. There are plenty more fish in the sea anyway. Every day's a different thing, so I'm not into wedding rings. It ain't personal, it's the way I think. Ah,、uh、ha, -huh. yeah. You know. And you know, that a change will make it better. You will know it. Yeah, that nothing lasts forever. You will know it. That a change will make it better. All right. Yep. All right. Let me come over here and share this.、Let's、see what we got going on here. <clears throat> All right, y'all. So y'all know what it is, Mark Fuller Team Alliance. So this is,、um, oh, excuse me, another edition of、um, Coffee and Shorts. I think this is、uh, number eleven, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to get into some observation.、Um, get yourself some iced coffee, some hot coffee, whatever you got. And、uh, engage with me with this observation of the market. So, if you're new to this、um, this platform, we are observing on a very specific trading platform, which is called Nadex.、Um, Nadex makes it possible for you to really capitalize on your understanding of the market. Itself, the actual movement of the market. If you understand how the market moves, you'll be able to use the instruments that we trade, which are called binary options. Damn, I don't know what happened to my tab. I just had it up, and now it ain't there. What the hell is that? No, what happened to this tab? Yo, I can't stand this. 
Why does it do this? Why does why does this happen? Um. Anyway, so Nadex makes it possible for you to capitalize on your actual understanding of the market because understanding how the market is moving is the key really to earning profits when you trade. Most people don't understand that. Most people. Most as in 99% of everyone out there, they don't understand that you really need to understand how to interpret the movement of the market in order to really capitalize on whatever it is that you have decided to trade. So it's understanding the movement that will allow you to know what the market is doing right now. Instead of trying to make a prediction as to what the market will do and hope that you're right with the prediction. That's how most people are trading. They're, they're using information to make a prediction on what they think the market's going to do based on what they see that the market has already done. So they're using historical information to try to predict. And this doesn't work. It just does not work because you cannot be consistently profitable that way. And y'all let me know if um, audio is coming through good. Let me know if the audio is coming through good before I continue. Yep, get the ice, get your iced coffee. <laughs> get your iced latte and all that. Audio's good. I'm just waiting for the confirmation before I continue. Cause I would hate to be doing all this talking and, and can't nobody hear what I'm saying. All right. Audio is good. Very good. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you, Stacy. All right. So I see Melanie in the building. I see Jay Carly. Um, I see Forrest, Peter Leonardi, um, Otis, Anthony Anderson. I see Angel, Shani, Nicole Blunt. Um, SG's here. Walker's here. Doug Leach. What's going on? Uh, Tavares and I see Anthony Anderson as well all right cool all right so we're gonna do some observation if you guys have any questions especially if you're new to the platform you're new to uh, this live stream or to the channel or just the team alliance in general if this is your first time seeing this content and you got questions about what you're seeing on the screen or just questions about anything that you might hear me say or mention, please feel free to ask. All right. That is what this is for. So first of all, shout out to everybody in Team Alliance who's been training. Um, everyone that has been, you know, acquiring the skill set, elevating their skill set, and really putting in the work for real. <laughs> Shout out to all of you doing that because your life is going to change, man. <laughs> Straight up and down. Your life is going to change. There's no way that you can do this. And when I say do this, I mean train, learn this skill, continuously elevate this skill, right? Continue to grow. There's no way you can do all of that and not be successful on this platform, one. And by being successful on this platform, form, you overcome all of the things that you have to personally deal with in order to eliminate the fear. You know, it could be scary trading because when you trade, there's money on the line. Absolutely. But what's powerful is that we are not really concerned about the money like that because by having the skill set we could take a little bit of money and turn it into a lot and not only that 
we take a little bit of money and turn it into freedom. Hold on. Hold on. Hold your horses. We turn it into freedom. You're going to, and it's only a matter of time, you're going to, as you train, as you grow, as you elevate, as you acquire the skill set, as things become clearer to you, as you gain more clarity, as you, you know, start to understand the elements of 301, you start to understand RCB, you, watch, you, you start to understand the box. As all of this, these things come into focus, it's only a matter of time before you also overcome your fear of the money part. Um, I know that for those of you that are following the Project Freedom, which is the video series that I'm doing, you know, you see the balance getting bigger, you see the contract size is getting bigger, and it's like, whoa, because you've seen it grow from a small amount, literally one contract with $100 to where it is now, which is hundreds, you know, it's over 100 contracts now that I'm at. I think the next trade, I'll be at 120 contracts on the next trade. Um, you've seen the progression from one contract up to where it is. You've seen the progression of the money. It, it started with $100 in the account. You know, now it's close to $10,000 in the account. You've seen that video after video, boom, 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 trade after trade. And understand that it doesn't take a lot to do it. Like what I'm doing is what you guys are going to do. This is what I want y'all to understand. What I'm doing is what's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to you inevitably, period. Like it's not, it's not a question. Oh, I wonder if this is going to happen to me, Mark. It is going to happen to you. You're going to do the same thing, period. It's only a matter of time. So what all of this training and this observation and, you know, these live streams and all of this stuff is doing is it's keeping you sharp because you constantly are being exposed to the same thing over and over again. Anytime I do these observations, you see the green box every time, right? As soon as you come up, as soon as I open up the charts, what do you see? The box. What do you see me doing with the box? You see me moving the box. So you see how I'm showing you what I'm naturally doing. This is my natural environment. Everything that you see me doing on this chart. This is what I do naturally. I don't even think about it. Even as I'm talking now, as soon as I see what needs to be done on the chart, I do it. Like right here, you see how the, the market is violating this uh, lower strike? Basically, it penetrated the bottom of the box just now, so it's time for me to move the box. That's it. Just move the box. I'm not even concerned about anything else. I'm not thinking about which binary this is. I'm not thinking about, oh, man, how many candles? You know, like these are questions that you guys will come up with because you're trying to gain an understanding of what you're, what you're seeing and what you're looking for. When you observe, you just watch. You see how I just moved the box? Now that I moved the box, look at, look at where the candle is. There's only one candle right now in the box. Mind you, look at all of the stuff that happened before where we are right now. Look at, look at these candles. Look at how the market looks back here. Look at this. Market's all over the place. And it's like, well, damn, how do we make sense out of this? We don't make sense out of this. This right here is showing you what we are not engaged in at all. None of this right here is for us. None of this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at these big ass candles. Look at these long ass wicks. We not participating in any of this activity. Now, that's what separates us and our skill set from what everyone else does. Everyone else will be trying to look for trade setups during all of this. Look, look at this. People out there right now on this platform looking for a trade setup in the midst of all of this activity. What are we doing? We over here with the little box. That's it. As soon as the candles penetrate the top or bottom of the box, we move the box. That's it. Rinse and repeat. Oh, well, Mark, did you get a trade today? No. Absolutely not. I haven't got anything. I haven't even seen RCB yet. So the point that I'm making is that it's the observation and your ability to do it that is the skill set within itself. 
So, yeah, right, exactly. This, this, this is what people is, is saying. But Mark, I ain't get a trade all day. You shouldn't have got a trade all day. <laughs> no trade was given to you all day. So if the market is not giving you anything, why are you trying to take or force your way into the market? There's no need for you to do that. You understand? This is another part of the skill. See, the skill set simply means that you know how to avoid all of the bullshit. All of the bullshit in the market and all of the traps, all of the nonsense, all of the excess activity that you ain't got no business being involved in. You're avoiding being in any of that. We ain't in none of that. All that activity I just showed you just now on the chart before where we are now, we ain't got nothing to do with none of that movement. There's nothing going on there for us at all. Oh, well, Mark, I thought I saw RCB earlier. No, you didn't. No, not, not on the euro dollar you didn't. That's what I'm looking at. You ain't see RCB at all. So... Again, I do this because I want people to see what it is that you should be doing. It's like, well, Mark, I didn't get a trade, though. Right. You shouldn't have gotten a trade. There was no trade given. You're right where you should be. So when you think that you're not doing it right or you're doing something wrong, make no mistake about it. You're not doing it wrong if you are in alignment with what the market is doing. Just, just remember that at all times. If you are in alignment with whatever the market is doing at the time, you're doing exactly what you should be doing. Period. That's what you should be doing. Oh, oh, well, on that one, the parameters weren't met. Right. Exactly. But how about you shouldn't even be looking at parameters yet? How about that? See, you elevate, you grow, you're constantly growing. And your understanding. And after a while, it becomes second nature. See, I'm not just like me right now. I'm, at, I'm looking at the chart and I'm doing my observation. I'm not looking for a trade. I'm not even applying parameters to see if a trade is setting up. Why not? Because the market's not stable yet. Market ain't stable yet. How do, how do I know that? Way too much activity. Candles are, are breaking the top and the bottom of the box. So how can the market be stable if the candles are violating the top and the bo bottom of the box? The box is the indication that the, the market is staying either under or above a strike price level. If it's not at least doing that, you have no business being in the market at all. So if you know that you have no business being in the market, knowing if it's penetrating the top or the bottom of the box, Within itself, just that one piece of information is keeping you out of bullshit all day. All day. Nothing to do. You understand? Nothing to do. Um, Eric Stevenson, what's happening? Um, I think that's Willis Majors in the building. Brian Green, what's going on? Um, Naked Flower, what's happening? Let me see what Angel says. What people don't understand is right now we're winning. Uh, let me put this up. She says, what people don't understand is right now we're winning. The market been going crazy all day, and I couldn't be happier safe keeping my money. Come on now. That's what we're talking about right there. Nothing to do. So the money does what? It stays in the account. Money stays in it. See, there's nothing to do until the market gives us something to do. And when the market gives us something to do, all we're going to be doing is being in a winning trade. That's it. So until the market gives that to us, what do we do? Nothing. We just observe. We, we're, we're observing to see all of the reasons why the market has not given it up yet. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at every reason why the market ain't give us nothing yet. And you can go through the reasons if you want. Just look at the chart. Up, Wix. Up is breaking the barrier. Up is breaking the bottom of the box. Nope. Breaking the top of the box. Long candle. Nope. Not ranging. Nope. See? These are reasons why not. So, 
Knowing why not means you're in alignment. If you know why you're not doing anything, that means that you're in alignment with the market. You wouldn't be able to know that if you were out of alignment because all you would be doing was try, would be trying to force your way into a trade. That's the difference. That's the difference. And this is why folks still be losing. Folks be still losing. This is why when you come into TA and you elevate your, your understanding and your knowledge through the training, everything changes. First thing that changes is your mindset. Your mindset starts to shift immediately because you stop thinking like, damn, well, I, you know, I got to get a trade. No, you don't. Why you got to get a trade? And the trade that you got to get, guess what? It's going to be a coin flip anyway if the market ain't stable. So if you're not good at recognizing that the market is or is not stable, then that means that you be flipping the coin all the time when you trade. Is that what you want? Coin got two sides, heads and tails. You want to flip the coin and hope that it lands on heads because you picked heads? See, you flip the coin up heads. Did you pick heads or did you pick tails? Ah, oh, damn, I picked tails that time. All right, well, it landed on heads. You lose. That's the equivalent of what people do when they trade in the market, not understanding stability. So instead of us doing that, we don't. You see, we don't do that. We don't do anything. We just observe and wait. So there's way more money to be made in observation. Not trading. Why are you going to make any money if you don't trade? Because we ain't going to lose. <laughs> if I don't lose, I made way more money than you did. Because you flipped the coin and you probably lost. And if you didn't lose yet, you're going to keep flipping the coin until you do. That's the difference. Come on now. Yeah, Rant Man's in the building a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Rant Man in the building. Um, Paley, if someone is telling me if it stays in the box, which is the barrier repeatedly after every five minutes, several times, is that confirmation? Oh, excuse me. Oh. Sorry about that. If it stays in the box repeatedly after every five minutes, several times, is that confirmation? Confirmation of what is my question? Confirmation of what? Because remember that we're not trying to confirm if a trade is valid. We're trying to observe the market and confirm that the market is valid. See the difference? Well, what's it, Mark? What do you mean a valid market? The market ain't valid if it's not stable. <laughs> if the market, listen, if the market's not stable, it's not valid. That's it. That's it. That's it, and that's all. If the market's not stable, it's not valid. So what that means now is you have to wait until the market stabilizes first before even considering a trade. So when we talk about confirmation or we talk about validity, we're really making more of a reference to the market, actually, not to trades. Not to trades. Not to trades. Um, Paley said confirmation of stability. If the market is staying in the box, that's the first indication that it is stabilizing. Why, do, why am I saying that? And let me see who really pays attention. Why did I just say that? What's the first indication of stability? I'm going to see how good y'all really are, man. We got 38 people in the building. I know the majority of that is, is already in TA. What's the first indication of stability? And this is for every, like, for people that are not in TA, I want you to see what the answers are because this is how good people are that, that are in training. Watch. First indication of stability. 
Look, 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 look. Look at this. <laughs> Come on, damn it. The range. The range. Come on now. The range. So if the market is ranging, then you know that it is in a slow condition. Now, you, some of you said slow condition. Are y'all correct? Hell yeah. Bilal said it. Angel said it. Slow condition. Anthony Anders said that. Um, Keith said clusters. Ultimately, it becomes clusters. Yes. But I see um, David Johnson, Paleus. They said range. Otis said range. Um, Nicole Blunt said slow environment. So everyone saying slow environment range, you are all correct. Because the range can only be there if the environment is slow. <laughs> See, the, mar the market is only going to move in a smaller range of distance if it slows down first. So you can't have a range without a slow environment. That's why they're one and the same. And this is the first indication that the market is stabilizing because you can't see that the market movement is actually becoming stable until the market slows down. And the indication that the market slowed down is a range. You're following me, right? The indication that the market slowed down is a range. Move this up a little bit. That's the first indication. Range. <clears throat> um, what else we got here? Yeah, Shandi said it too. He said it loud. Range. Micah said it also. Also, Doug Leach. And Forrest. Very good. Um, so Paley says that's true. The strike price has become shortened, but ranged if that makes sense. Yes. Correct. And look at what SG says. It's the first letter of RCB. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. First letter. Yes, sir. Um, Brian, I definitely appreciate that. Um, make sure y'all give the video a thumbs up, whatever platform that you're on. Um, right now, we're streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So on Twitter, y'all make sure that y'all retweet and like and share the video. And do the same for um, Facebook and for YouTube. Like and share the video. And on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notifications. All right? Um, Teddy says confirmation of stability is moving at M one MP and ranging. Yes. Yep. Doug says clusters confirm the barrio. Come on now. Come on. Come on. That's right. So not only your process tells us the process, but so does the algorithm because it gives you indication that the environment is slow. Correct. And that's what that's what I mean when you guys hear me say that if you're in alignment with the market, you'll know. See, the most important thing is being in alignment with the market. Now, now what do I mean by that? If you don't know how to Know the outcome ahead of the trade that you take. You're out of alignment. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Listen to this. You should know the outcome of the trade before you take. Sure we do. Sure we All right, this this would be a little teaching 
little teaching moment for some. Excuse my eyes. Where the market is going to end based on how it's moving. Yes, you will. Oh, but Mark, the market could just move. If the market is not stable, it'll move out of nowhere and move from one position to another. If the market is stable, it stops that. It stops moving like, like that. So now your ability to know what you're, what you're seeing, question that you should be asking yourself is, wait, is the market stable or is it not stable? Now, if you can't answer that, you can't know the outcome of a trade before you take the trade. You have to be able to answer that question. Is the market stable or not? If the answer is no, you already know that the outcome of the trade will be based on the coin flip. If the answer is yes, you know that the outcome of the trade will be based on the market. Hold on. What, do I, what am I saying? A coin flip means it could go either way. That's what happens when the market's not stable. The market can move wherever it wants to move, and that can be either on the top or the bottom of your strike price. So now your trade that you're in, because you picked the side, now becomes that coin flip. Not because of the trade, it's a coin flip because of the behavior in the market. The behavior in the market determines the outcome of trades. Trades will either end above or below, but it's a coin flip, meaning that you don't know which one is going to be because the behavior is too unstable. So it could be either one. So that means you don't know ahead of the time. You don't know in advance what the outcome will be. Because the behavior of the market turns the trade into a coin flip. It could be on either side of that line. Now, on the contrary, when the market stabilizes, it stops moving like that. So if it stops moving like that, you already see where the market is ending. You know where the market is ending. When the market is ranging, when the market is respecting a barrier, when the market starts to cluster together, you know where it's ending. That's why and how you know the outcome of the trade. Not because it was a good trade, but because your timing of being in a trade was correct. Like, yeah, now's a good time for me to be in a trade if one comes. So now if the market delivers a trade on top of that, what you think is going to happen? That's going to be chicken dinner all day. That's chicken dinner all day. That's a win. One, you know the outcome. The reason you know the outcome of the trade is because you understand the outcome of the movement. You can only know that if the market is stable. When the market is stable, it tells you where it's going to end up. Oh, boy. This is what it is, and this is all facts. See, I'm not just talking and making this shit up. This is what really happens. And the problem with the way people trade is that they don't know this. And even after people do know this, they still choose to, to coin flip. So it's just like how some people will run into this information. And now you know because you heard me tell you, but you still choose to, to take trades based on coin flips, meaning you still choose to trade when the market's not stable. You still are choosing not to wait until the market stabilizes before you enter your trade. You still are basing your, your trade on the trade and not the market. Another coin flip. 
Oh, well, but the trade set up. It's a coin flip if the market ain't stable. It's a coin flip if you don't know if the market is stable or not. See, the market could be stable or it could not be stable. But the fact that you don't know and you're only basing your decision to enter that trade off of the trade makes it a coin flip still because you don't know. You understand? You have to know exactly what the market is doing at the time. If all that you know is just that information, that's how you'll consistently be profitable because you'll know which trades make sense to be in. The only trade that makes sense to be in is the one that you can enter when the market is stable. That's it. That's it. And that's all. That's it. And that's all. <clears throat> um, yes. All day. Look at this. Look, look at what Peter says. Chicken dinner before you take it. Before you even in the trade. Come on, man. <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> Indicators for the sale. <laughs> um, Angel, we on the bench and someone throws a marble up asking where it's going to land on this line. Our opponent guesses while it's in the air. We tell them where it is once it's there. Ooh. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff, right? Because we'll we'll know based on it being thrown up where it's going to end up. We know how it was thrown up. That's hard. You got man. You got to catch up to that. We know how it was thrown up, so we know where it's going to end up. <laughs> mm mm mm. Um, Sean, expect one trade a week on average, but have no expectations. Sounds of what it is, what it is. It is what it is. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And when you have no expectations, you get way more than you expected. Whoa, 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 whoa. When you have no expectations, you get more than you expected. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, Paley's knowing the outcome is knowing the overall behavior at the time. 100%. Yep. Yep. <laughs> the flippers. <laughs> yep, them coin flippers. Um, do the gig during the phase of stability. I've noticed that receiving an actual fill at either 80 or 20 is harder to execute. Do you have any words on this? It's not that it's hard to execute because you're not executing the fill. Nadex is going to fill your order. If there is someone on the opposite side of the trade at the time, you have to realize that this is a real platform. So when you trade or when you place an order, I should say, your order is on the platform waiting to be filled by someone else on the other side of the trade. So there will be times when you place an order and you don't get filled. And there will be times when you place an order and you do get filled and you didn't see option pricing. There are times when you see option pricing and you still don't get filled on the trade. There are times when you don't see option pricing and you do get filled on the trade. So you can't just go off of the option pricing that you see displayed on the platform and just use that as the be all end all for whether or not you'll be filled on a trade. Because remember that it's based on real time orders. So even an order, I can have an order sitting on the platform for, for one direction or the other, never see any option pricing at all on the platform and my order will be filled by actual orders that come in on the platform. 
You see? So it works either way. And don't limit yourself to thinking that, you know, oh, it's hard to get a fill at 80 or 20. It has nothing to do with that. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. The way that you get filled on an order is by someone on the opposite side of your trade actually placing or taking that order from you. Someone that wants good risk reward and they're basing their setup on risk reward will end up taking your trade, but because they don't understand stability, they're literally just handing over money to you. Your order gets filled. That's what that, that's what that means. You get filled on that order. Another thing that happens is this. Remember that when the market is stable, it's moving less. It's moving less distance. And it is also moving less times, like fewer times. Sometimes you'll only have a range of three micro pips, for example, meaning it only went one, two, three within a one minute time frame. I'm just using this as an example. Right? It, hold on. Um, the hell was I just saying? Oh, so for example, it can be in a three micro pip range. Three micro pips. Because the market is so stable, if the position of the market away from the strike price in that last minute, and this is this again is just an example, during that last minute, if the distance away from the strike price is further away, because the market is so stable, the algorithm knows this, and it won't show pricing for orders that could be there to you so you don't see option pricing. It looks like it's priced out. You know, for example, you'll be buying and you'll only see pricing in the 90s, 94, 95, 92, 96. And your distance away from the strike price could be, let's say, six micro pips. Let's say seven micro pips, right? With that much distance away, the algorithm automatically does not show you option pricing on the other side of the trade that you want. It does that on purpose because it doesn't want to give you an advantage. Like some people trade based on option pricing. So they'll enter a trade just because they see option pricing. So they, the algorithm purposely won't show it to you because there's, there's too much distance away from the strike price. It's giving you an edge if they show all the option pricing because you'll just take all those orders just because you see them. Does that make sense? The algorithm is smart. It automatically creates competition between the buyer and the seller of the option on the platform. It has to create competition. It's a competitive market that we're in. So it's not going to just show you all of the orders that are on the other side so you can sit there and take them. Because that's, that's like, you know, what, what do they call it? Sitting ducks. You're just taking all those orders because they showed everything to you. So you take all of those orders and just collect all that money. That, that basically was free money. There was no competition. Instead of doing that, the, the, the algorithm won't do that. It won't show you pricing. But it doesn't mean that someone doesn't have an order on the other side at your price. You're, like, does that make sense? So because we use... The, the pricing mechanism as a threshold to balance out our timing on the platform. It's just a mechanism that helps us to understand the algorithm better in relation to the market. See, it's not about the algorithm in relation to the option because that's only one component of what you're looking at. People get confused when they come on this platform and they're looking at option pricing. They're not considering how the market's moving. So now what happens is you can enter a trade based on the option pricing that you see, but if you don't understand that the market's not stable, now when the market moves back 
and let's say it it starts to threaten your strike price. Now, when you look at option pricing, it's better pricing because the actual market is moving closer to your strike price. And that means that now they're showing you more orders that are there. So you, you see more orders. When you look at the option price and you're like, oh man, I could have got a better price. You could have got a better price or the market might be moving to the other side of your option. See? And if you don't know, if you don't know the difference, which, which I would say damn near everybody don't know the difference. The majority, 99.99% of everybody on this platform does not know the difference. And because you don't know the difference, you're thinking you're going to get a better price when in actuality, you're just going to lose this trade. Man, man, man. Do you ever realize what I'm explaining to y'all right now? Oh, my goodness. Some of y'all may not understand this at all. But you can watch this at a later time and catch up to this information. But what I just said just now, powerful information about nuances on Nadex. You thinking you're going to get a better price on your option. Put it like this. Better option pricing is not more important than stability in the market. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Do y'all understand that? Oof. I, I need a sip. Hold on. Oh, man. Oh, man. Mm, 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 mm. Elevation. <clears throat> All right, let me come back. So let me see. <laughs> Jamal said, unstable is no sense of direction. Stable is knowing the direction. Yes, and more importantly, knowing the position. <laughs> Woo! Jay Carly in the building. Um, she said the amount of time that you don't get filled during true stability are not as common. Right. That's right. Um, Angel, we're dealing with limit orders, which is what makes that possible. Correct. Go ahead, Angel. Go ahead, girl. She hit it right on the head. Listen to what she just said. We're dealing with limit orders. This, this is what makes it possible. See, this is how you get filled without even seeing pricing on the option. You don't have to see pricing on the platform to be filled. Don't even worry about that part. This is why I tell you don't worry about the trade. What's more important than all of that is whether the market is stable or not. That's the, that's the key. That is the key. Um, do the gig. Thanks for the extra description on this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Shani, Mark, a lot of people quick glance and look at option pricing only. Yeah. And you should not do that. Because when you do that, you're limiting your understanding at the same time. That's why I give you the tools that I give you now. Now, in the past, yes, we've used option pricing as a tool. But option pricing is a tool. And it's a piece of a larger puzzle. Of, of, of with, with more pieces that we have to put together to see the puzzle. So that's only one mechanism that is, is being used. But don't limit your understanding to that one mechanism. Um, Angel says, stick to the process. It's either a fill or it's not. As long as you're confident in the stability. Hold on. This is Don DeMarco right here. As long as you're confident in the stability, observation and confirmation of all parameters is how I view this. That's very good. Very good. Don DeMarco. Don DeMarco. Don DeMarco. Very good. Um, do the gig. I've noticed that during the final one minute, there's a lot to notice about the price 
direction, behavior, and time decay of the option price. Yeah, and that all of that stuff that you're talking about at the end, like the time decay of the option. And actually, no, no let me not even say that. What you're saying makes sense. Yes, it does. It makes sense. It does make sense. They all tie in together. Yes. Yep. And this is correct. That's right. TA are the only ones that know this. Yeah, because if other if more people knew this, they wouldn't be trading on the other side of our trades. But the majority of people that take the other side of our trades are the risk reward warriors. The people that love better pricing, the people that love out the money, you know. Oh, I'm only risking 20 to make 80. Yeah, and that's exactly what you're doing. You're risking 20 because I'm going to take that if you, if you trade against me. I'm taking that all day. So you're risking 20. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not risking 80. See, I'm not risking anything because I understand the market. <sighs> Do you ever realize what, yo, see people that the, people don't understand that they, they don't understand that statement. I'm not risking anything because I understand the market. <laughs> people don't catch that. They don't understand that at all. Um, David J says in time option pricing be becomes obsolete. I just see how the market is moving and execute. I don't even look at pricing anymore. Come on now. <laughs> Whoa. This is some elevation right here. <laughs> Bilal told me I need to chill. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's what it is. They they think that they get more money. Right. Right. You think that better pricing means more money. Better pricing means more setup. <laughs> you get better pricing, it means you're getting set up. Oh shit. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> this info is confidential. <laughs> you you know what? You're right because only TA gonna understand. <laughs> See, you ain't gonna understand nothing I'm talking about until you come in here. You gotta train with us to know. And until you do, you're just listening. And it's just making sense, but you're not really understanding it yet. See, training elevates your understanding of what I talk about here. It's what it is. <laughs> X-Files of the Matrix. <laughs> uh, um, Brian, you need a good trend before trade. Not necessarily, Brian. Not necessarily. I understand why you're saying that, but on this platform, you don't need a trend at all. What you need to understand more so is behavior of the movement. So the market does not necessarily have to be trending in one direction or the other. In fact, it could not be trending at all. It, it doesn't even have to be moving in one direction or the other. And if it is moving in one direction or the other, the movement if it's limited, it's letting you know that the market is respecting certain points that it has moved to already. And that respect of its existing movement is what we call barriers. So the market creates barriers that it respects afterwards. When it does that, that's a behavior. And when it does that, that's a clear indication of stability of the movement because it's respecting what it created. Um, Jay Carly, we used it as a tool for time management, not to end of a trade. Yep. <laughs> they love risk reward until that 1099. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, snap. Yes, the people that love money management. Exactly. Exactly. Not understanding. Not understanding any of it. Um, Peter says, I'm afraid too many people will learn this. It could explode. You know what's funny, Peter? Most people don't listen to me. Like people be, you know, people will come around and they'll hear what I'm saying. And of course, it means a lot to us. But the majority of people ain't listening to me. They're not listening. They just think I'm some dude talking. Like, oh, I, I, he's always talking. He never trades. He don't take trades. He don't give signals. See, people are searching for that type of stuff, so they'll never, you know, in large numbers and in masses, gravitate to this information anyway. And I, you know, I understand. It is what it is. But guess what? That's exactly why the masses are losing. The masses are losing because they don't listen to me. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, you don't got to listen to nothing I say. Keep doing what you're doing. But the fact remains that I am very, you know, I, I'm, I eloquently explain why people lose. And I think that when people hear this and they know that I'm right, it makes them even more pissed off. You know, they give they get even more even more upset at me. So the more upset that they get at me, the less likely they are to do it anyway. They they don't want to do it. Cause they mad that I'm right. They like literally, I'm I'm not even joking. They be upset at me that I'm right. And it's like, well, if you can't beat them, join them. But they ain't gonna join me. They ain't gonna join. They're gonna keep. They're gonna continue. They're gonna, they're gonna continue to look for signals and strategies and try to figure stuff out on their own. And they're gonna keep losing. And it's just gonna, you know, be more the same. So, yeah, it ain't nothing to worry about. People are not gonna listen to me. <laughs> yeah, they do all of that. If I lose two and win one, I'll be fine. Yeah, I gotta. All I gotta do is win more than I lose. No, what you need to do is understand why you would lose. Why would you lose in the first place? If you understand that clearly, you can stop losing. And if you can stop losing, then you can start winning consistently. If you can start winning consistently, you can scale up your account. <sighs> Hold on, man. Do you, like, pay attention. See, it's funny because I'm like, if you just pay attention to what I'm saying, it makes perfect sense. If you figure out why you would lose, don't do any of that. Only do what is going to win. Once you do that, right, now you can scale up your account. Because you can put 100% value on every trade. But that's not good. Mark, that's not good risk management. That's terrible risk and money management, Mark. No, what's terrible risk and money management is the way you trade. Because what you're doing is you're trying to compensate for your lack of understanding of the market by getting a, a better risk reward trade. In your mind, you're only risking 20. But the fact that you're risking 20 is the problem. We're not risking anything. Hold on. <laughs> When you elevate your understanding of the market, you stop risking. What? <laughs> man, this is a classic today. This is a classic today, man. Somebody, somebody will catch what I'm saying today that don't like me. Um... Yep, that's what it is. Even people that know can't control themselves. Oh, my goodness. See, the thing about it, too, is that people don't understand that you have to elevate your mindset. People just think that, they, that they'll be all right just figuring out how to trade. You ain't going to be all right. Because you can't figure out how to trade profitably until you elevate your mindset. Why? Because trading profitably 
and only trading profitably requires patience and discipline. So how can you trade profitably only if you don't have patience and discipline? You can't. So you never will. And that's how people will come into TA, right? Not follow my instructions, do other shit, think that they got the strategy, and then go off and, and try to start trading, thinking that they, that they got it, but they never worked on their mindset. And end up losing anyway. So it's not that you came into TA and learned TA stuff and then lost. You came into TA and didn't learn TA stuff and lost. You just came into TA and was around TA stuff, but you never learned it. See, you got to let this sink into you. You have to let the mindset training elevate you first. You still trading. When you elevate your mindset, you stop trading. Hold on. When your mindset elevates, you stop trading and you start observing. <laughs> man, oh man. Mm -mm -mm. Um, wait, where we at? Oh, do the gig. Do you have any words to share regarding when events like today's FOMC announcement can shock price and when to avoid being in a trade, even if you witness stability just before a news release? Well, if you, I mean, if you witness stability before news comes out and no trade comes, it doesn't matter anyway what happens after that. Witnessing stability is just fine but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to trade. See, like I always know what these questions are really leaning into. It's like, in other words, well, what if you see stability right before news comes out and then you get into a trade and then news comes out and it affects the trade. That's what you're really asking. And it's like, no, when the market is stable, the market is stable. If a trade comes when the market is stable, you'll be in that winning trade. If no trade comes when the market is stable, you won't be in any trade. So you don't have to concern yourself with, oh, there's news coming out at two. I got to be careful. There's news coming out at two. All right, cool. FOMC, the, 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 the minutes, whatever, interest rates, you know, the, 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 the board of uh, whatever decision, whatever it is. Bank of England decides something and you trade in the pound. So what? What's funny is that I don't look at news events at all. The only thing I ever look at is the market. So just like we were looking um, a little while ago, closer to around 2 o'clock, you just mentioned the FOMC. Now I realize that's what actually happened to make that activity take place in the market. And that's cool. FOMC, they did whatever they did, had a meeting or, you know, whatever. I don't even know what it was. Well, it, it could have been an, a, a, an announcement for something. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. We're not going to be in any of that activity at all. <clears throat> so that's the beauty of being able to actually understand the market. You're not concerned about news either. It's never a situation where it's like, oh, hey, guys, be careful. This news event is coming out at this time. It don't matter. We'll see what happens. We'll see what goes on. If it creates more instability in the market, guess what happens? We keep moving the box more. That's it. That's it. So there's never there's never a time where we get caught off guard or oh look, we got caught up and you got, you know, you got caught up in a news event. Nah, we ain't getting caught up in a news event. We ain't getting caught up in anything. Our skill level is too high for us to ever be fooled. We, we're not going to be tricked. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But that was a good question. That was a good question. Um, Jamal, the other side does not realize that all money is not good money. Up. Oh. Yep. 
hundred percent. Um, Angel, if you're training daily with TA and you're not allowing yourself to deviate, there will never be a time when you are out of tune with stability. No matter what's in the news, did I not, yo? This is good. <laughs> Soul Child on fire today. She on fire. Listen, look at what she's saying. Now, mind you, I just said this. And she already had it typed. I didn't even read it until just now. This the vibe all day. This the vibe all day. Shiny said, nah, when you recognize instability, you become the news. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Shiny want to get some, too. He says, you become the news. News events are irrelevant to T.A. It's a lagging indicator. <laughs> Come on, man. Damn. Look, Jimmy said, Mark, stop making so much damn sense. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh uh uh. Yeah, let me, let me read what James says. As a former student but lifelong team alliance understudy, I was drawing more money in this past one full year than I lost in 10 years playing stupid risk reward. Amen. J. Carly, trading is a rinse and repeat. Wait, what happened to it? Rinse and repeat job. 99% of people will not just repeat. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and I'll add to that. Profitable trading is a rinse and repeat job. Yes, it is. Um, Shani, that's hard. And Mark's voice, yes, sir. Lagging indicator, sheesh. Yeah, that, I mean... Shiny hit it right on the head. Ooh, look at this. Paley said, rinse and repeat mindset and microwave mindset. Two totally different things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Um, Brian, I trade on Hugo's way and I use limit orders. Okay. Yeah, Brian, you might want to check out Nadex. Nadex is a powerful platform. Oh, excuse me. U.S. based, regulated, all of that good stuff. And the binary options are different. They're not like um, the traditional binary options that uh, most people are used to. Um, Keith McCoy, what's going on, sir? Paley said, news don't affect the now. Only the now affects the now. Very good. Um, Griffin, what's happening? Angel, this live is too far. You're making this 85 degree weather outside. Look like some iced tea right now. <laughs> she said, them Don DeMarco's be better than winning trades. <laughs> yeah, when you earn a Don DeMarco over here, you know it's real. You know it's real. Oh, maybe Angel was the light I was talking about yesterday. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Uh, Walker said conventional trading barely includes any renting or repeating at all. Account just be musty with L's. <laughs> <laughs> All facts. <laughs> he said, your account is musty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. Damn. Yep, but I mean, shit. You know what this is, man. That's why every time when we come on here, it's like, it's like a celebration because we know what it is that we doing. We know what's happening here. Tell me, y'all. 
I mean, just and just to recap again. So this is for anyone that might, you know, be new to TA or, you know, you never have run into um, this content before you're new to the Team Alliance platform. You know, you're new to Nadex, whatever, whatever your situation is. All right, now we unmuted. All right, we back. I'm over here talking and this thing wasn't even on. All right, but it should be back on now. Let me verify, let me just make sure. Can y'all hear now? Y'all should have audio back. The whole studio just cut off just now and I lost the audio briefly. Let me know if y'all hear me now, you should though. Is back? Okay, cool. All right, so let me just, I wanted to recap. Um, you hear an echo? What? You still hear an echo now? Or is it good now? Don't let my OCD kick in, please. There's an, there's an echo? What? All right, hold on. How about now? It should be back now. Good now? Come on, say it's good. All right. We good, we good, we good, we good. Let's get it down to Marco for that shit. Where is it at? That ain't it. There you go. <laughs> Dom DeMarco. Damn. Dom DeMarco. All right, we back. All right. So just to recap, right? Yes, thank you, Jay Carly. You were the first one to say shit. As soon as you said echo, I was like, uh, no, that's not going to. That ain't going to work. Um, so if you understand the market, that's the first part. Yeah. And you know, I'd have been mad, right? Everybody else wasn't going to say nothing, right? <laughs> nah, somebody else I think would have said so. Cause, cause y'all know how my OCD is. So if you understand the market, that's the first part. Understanding the market is the key. Developing your mindset so that you have the patience to deal with the market after you understand the market. 
So it's like when you understand the market, you understand the fact that the market needs to become stable before you do anything. That's that's the first thing. You got to know that. Once you know that, now you need patience. <laughs> Excuse me. You need patience and you need discipline. Right? Once you have patience and discipline, now you're only going to wait for the market to be stable before a trade comes. Once a trade comes, that'll be the trade that you'll be in. That's going to be a winning trade, period. Now you have the blueprint and you're able to execute the blueprint. Everything I just mentioned, understanding the market, elevating your mindset and only applying that process of waiting for the trade to come when the market is stable. That's an entire process. In a nutshell, that's the protocol for TA. That's what we do. That's the blueprint that I, I teach you. Now, once you have that, guess what happens next? Now, when you trade, right, you win. Hold on. When you trade, you win. Now, the fact that you are going to win when you trade now means that now you can scale up. Hold on. Now you can scale up your account. So that means you can give full value to all the trades. And that means within 30 trades, you'll be in a financial position to be free because of the way that you scaled up the account, which you were able to do because you have a blueprint to win. See, the blueprint to win is not a trading strategy. The blueprint to win is understanding the market, having the mindset to deal with the market, only trading when the market gives you a trade, when the, it is stable, and rinsing and repeating that process. That's the blueprint. That's not a trading strategy. That is a complete process that you're learning. That's what TA training is giving to you. See, every element that I just mentioned, understanding the market, mindset, waiting for the trade to come while the market is stable, rinse and repeat. It ensures consistency of your trades. What, what does that mean? When you trade, you win. Period. When you trade, you win. So if you know that when you trade, you're going to win, now you can scale up with full confidence. You're not scared to scale up. You're not scared to give 100% value on every trade. So that means you can start with one contract with $100. So you can start from the bottom. Hold on. Listen. When you have the blueprint, you start from the bottom. And you go all the way to the top. <laughs> and keep going. So not only do you put yourself in position, you remain in position. What? See, you don't just get to 30 trades and that's it. It's really one and oh forever. It's one and oh forever. So even after you went to 30 trades and your account is positioned now, it's one and oh. One and oh, all the time. <sighs> crazy. This is crazy, man. Like, like, so when people don't understand what we're doing, they don't understand how the freedom comes. The freedom comes through the process that I just mentioned. And you have to build and move through the process from the beginning to get to the end. Like, like the end result is you being free.
The end result is you being in position. One trade paying all of your bills every month. That's the end result. But what happens before that, you have to start at the beginning. The same way that you start from the bottom when you start trading. Like some people will try to cheat. Oh, well, I'm going to deposit about, you know, a thousand or two. Nah, we don't do that. We don't do that. We want to know forever. We don't got to deposit a thousand. We start with a hundred dollars. We start with a hundred bucks. The bottom. And this is what I'm saying. So, so this is exactly why as you develop the skill and you begin to build your mindset, you're always in position to start from the bottom if you need to, but you ain't going to need to if you do it right the first time. See, you, you, you're going to start from the bottom once. You're going to start from that $100 one time because you took the time to actually build and move through the process the right way. Make sense? And that's how you do this. That's how you do this. 100%. Look, look at what Ken said. Understand the market and next, understand yourself. 100%. That's mindset. See, understanding yourself is mindset. Mm-mm-mm. Um, Griffin, a few questions I had yesterday was answered. Very good. Very good. Um, Carmen, what's going on? Andrew said, understand yourself first so that your understanding of the market is not cloudy. There's a reason every single trade starts with mindset. Rant man, he's the first step. <laughs> Come on now. Mm -mm -mm. Keith said, RCB, you are one with the market. TA style win win. Yep. Yep. Um, Carrie, glad I got to join Coffee and Charts. I'm drinking coffee, observing the Euro, and working on my work charts. Great day with TA. Nice. Nice. This is what we do, man. This is what we do. Look how this market is moving right now. <laughs> people people really out here trying to trade with all of this. Silly. Just silly. Flipping the coin. Like, oh, tails. No, it was heads. Like, damn, how was that heads? Stop coin flipping. You don't have to worry about it if it's going to be heads or tails. See, what we do, we got heads on both sides. We became the coin and put heads on both sides. <laughs> That's what we do. We the coin with heads on both sides. Man, oh man. All right, y'all, I'm out. So listen, thank y'all for tuning in. Everybody out there that um is new, Make sure that you watch this because some really good content was in this one today for real. Uh, let me see what Shani just said. Piggybacking off what was said last podcast, Mark, you can't be focused on anything else but this. If you're not here to be great, why are you here? And on that note, we out. Coffee and trust, man. You know what it is. Mark for the team of life. Peace.